In this video, we will take a look at the Unity Asset Transformer, a powerful solution for preparing complex industrial data for real-time 3D. We'll cover the various options Unity offers, presented by Unity's Cam Airs. Hey y'all, so today we're talking Unity Asset Transformer. What we use this for is going to usually coincide with architectural visualization and in software like Revit. So the idea is that you can take all of these types of non-polygonal data, which is called parametric data or BREP data, so more spline-based, kind of NURBS-based type math, and that can automatically be tessellated, optimized, and scaled to fit whatever you need to on the other end where it can export a tessellated mesh without needing to hire a 3D artist or retopology artist to take that into a 3D CC tool like a blender and have to retopologize that. So the first tool being Asset Transformer Studio, previously Pixie Studio. So what happens is that you use Studio as its own kind of standalone third, third party piece of software. It doesn't live within Unity and frankly, it's entirely agnostic to Unity. It doesn't care if you're going into Unreal, Omniverse, Godot, it doesn't matter. And the idea is that you're going to ingest your, let's just use an example of an assembly file. So let's say you have an engine, it's an assembly file with sub-assemblies, with part files. You can pull all of that into Asset Transformer Studio, run a series of algorithms through the UI and the dash display in front of you, see immediate feedback on what that looks like in 3D and watch what's happening as you decimate certain types of objects to certain levels of quality. The next tool over is Asset Transformer Toolkit. So you can point to a file, ingest that directly into Unity. So this one is necessarily in a Unity pipeline. And then you can do a series of rules on that. So your rules, you can make um, select these pieces if metadata matches this, then delete. Select these pieces if the material matches this, replace material with other material, so on and so forth. And the idea is that you can create these rule sets and effectively have them able to be repeated on similar other assets that you have. So what you'd likely see is that you have a rule set that works really well for factories in large, many thousand square foot uh, environments. You'd likely have a different rule set for something like a car. And you'd likely have a different rule set from that for something like uh, an engine, let's say. So it could be in your, your factory, your warehouse setting that you want to search by very different size modifiers or by very different um, settings than you would on something that's much smaller and more compact where you may want to retain more of the data and not scrape it all out. So the idea is that you over time can create kind of a series of recipes that are going to work quite well in the toolkit. So the neat thing is that SDK is truly a software development kit, meaning I would typically have someone who really understands Python or who understands C-sharp because it does come in multiple flavors to open this up in something like PyCharm, like Visual Studio, and actually start working with the APIs that are listed on the back end to create recipes that can be ran in a headless mode. So the idea is as SDK receives new updates and new features, that Studio and Toolkit will in turn reflect a lot of that and that they're built on top of SDK fundamentally. SDK drives all of the transformations and it is the only one that allows you to run headless. So with SDK, you could create something like a service that can watch a folder for whenever you add a new file to that it detects that a new file has been added. It can then do a series of transformations based on that type of file. It can then export whatever types of files you're indicating and push that directly into something like Asset Manager that Unity has. 